Greetings, humans. You have entered the Command Zone, your destination for all aspects of Elder Dragon Highlander. Enjoy your stay. What's up, everybody? You are watching slash listening to the Command Zone podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Jimmy Wong. I'm another DJ. DJ, DJ, DJ. Hello, hello. Today, hello, hello. Today we are talking about a pre-con upgrade. Oh, this is the boy. one that I tackled. It's the Dungeons of Death. Dungeons of Death. Yeah, AFR Adventures in the Forgotten Realms is the Dungeons and Dragons themed set from Magic the Gathering. And we get extra pre-con decks this year. Normally we'd be celebrating, but there's so many these days that... <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing we got a dungeons and dragons set and now we have a dungeon based pre-constructed mm -hmm. deck i am so excited to tell you about what this deck does and about how you can upgrade it to play immediately within your playgroup yeah and i've actually gotten to play test it a bit it's a lot of fun so let's get right into it but before we do don't forget if you want to pick up this deck or any of the singles we're talking about today maybe you want to offload some of your collection so you can get that sweet in-store credit head to cardkingdom.com slash command zone that's our affiliate link for you to purchase all of your magic singles sealed product and more and there's so many awesome cards this year we had modern horizons 2 we have innistrad sets coming up and we have all of this DD &D stuff really awesome because i think it balances that nice line of playing casually and competitively and this set is filled with tons of goodies especially if you're a DD &D fan also head on over to ultra pro and buy some ultra pro product oh you wanted to say something about i want to say something about ultra pro that they have licenses to print the magic art and the ah. magic art from Dungeons and Dragons is awesome. It is. Like it is way cooler than the average set. And if you like Dungeons and Dragons, if you like this style, you're going to love the art that comes on Ultra Pro products. So pick up your play mat, pick up your sleeves. If you're going to be playing in stores or at Magic Fest, you want your deck to look really nice. Yeah. Check out Ultra Pro. Especially because they have some of the most famous characters in D&D history. You got like Dritz and all those people on, you know, Tiamat. You can get play mats and sleeves with all that stuff. So cool. Also, make sure you check out our brand new Kickstarter. We have one going on right now, and you don't want to miss out. It is a limited supply, as always. This time, we are selling amazing, beautiful Game Nights deck boxes. These are produced by Ultra Pro. They are tip-top quality. They can fit two double-sleeved 100-card commander decks, as well as has a middle compartment for dice or an additional 60-card deck if you're someone that plays modern or any of those formats. This is an absolute must-have in your collection because it's sturdy. The box locks up and it won't open unless you pry it open because it's secure and safe. You can take it with you anywhere in the world to travel and bring your decks around, especially now that you might be traveling to different events, your LGS, or maybe even a Magic Fest sometime in the future. So make sure you go to the show more area below this video, click on that link. You can even pause this video right now to do so. This campaign is going to end at a certain point and you don't want to miss out because if the campaign ends, you can't buy it anymore. If we sell out of the allotted amount we have, you can't buy it anymore either. This is your only chance to get it. Make sure you head on over to that Kickstarter right now. Make your pledge and blammo. That's all you have to do. You can come right back to this video and watch this awesome video. And of course, the last way to support the show directly at patreon.com slash commands. And we shout out one lucky patron every single week. So this week's episode is dedicated, dedicated to, to Luis Magana. Magana. Luis, you rock. Thank you. You're awesome. Okay. As with our pre-con upgrades, it's always the same. DJ tackled this one. The rules are 10 cards in and 10 cards out. Total budget around $30. And we're going to usually, typically, we leave the mana base as is because we want to waste uh, our, we don't want to waste any of our picks on lands. Also, we don't, you don't need to tell us that like better lands are better. You know yeah, what exactly. I mean? Like, yeah, like, we don't need, you don't need <laughs> interesting. that. Interesting. No, we want it, we want like a good 10 in, 10 out that can have your pre-constructed deck start hanging with your current play group, you know? Yep. Get this deck playing with your friends as quick quickly as possible very exciting okay but before we get into that let's talk about the new commanders specifically the one that is on the front of the box the lead singer as we like to say of the deck and we'll talk about the other options but let's kick it off with sephiris of the hidden ways sephiris of the hidden ways is white blue black for a two three legendary human wizard whenever one or more creature cards are put into a graveyard from anywhere your graveyard right your graveyard from anywhere venture into a dungeon Ooh. Dun, dun, dun. This ability triggers only once each turn. Okay. So, and then the second part, there's one last line, right? Oh, you're right, you're right, you're right. <laughs> Whenever you... <laughs> Sorry. It looked like it had so much text. Okay. There is a lot on Guess. this one. 
So whenever you complete a dungeon, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Okay, so let's talk very quickly about dungeons. It's a brand new mechanic in this set. Uh, these are special cards. There are three of them. Maybe there'll be more in the future. Who knows? And they are basically a little bit of a pathway that you can take. So when you enter into a dungeon or venture into a dungeon, if you haven't chosen a dungeon, you choose one of the three. And then you move a little token or counter into it. And every time you, again, venture into the dungeon, you move into your choice of the next room. I feel like Saga's a little bit, right? Like yeah. one step, one step, one step. Yeah. Some uh, dungeons have uh, more rooms than others. Some have split off paths that you can decide as you go through. You can sort of customize it to sort of what's happening on the battlefield and what you have in your hand and what your plan is. Once you reach the last room, you do whatever is happening in that dungeon, whatever trigger happens, and then you leave the dungeon and congrats, you have completed a dungeon. So, so, so I don't think we're going to read all of the dungeons, but yeah. I think that there is something important to sort of note about it, that every step is not really a card's worth of value. Right. I think that's an important thing to note is that it's not like, oh, I do the thing, I get the payoff and I get like a card's worth of value, whether it's a creature or a card or damage or whatever. Right. It's not that. At the very beginning, you get stuff like scry one. There's or, one where you get like a goblin or plus one, plus one counter on something. You yeah. Know? Each player loses one life. But as you get deeper into some of the dungeons, the abilities get more and more powerful. And of course, the final room of the dungeon is usually the biggest payoff. Yeah. So for, for example, on this one, after you go through four things, the payoff is draw a card. Hey, cool. So, that, so that's the big, the big payoff is a card that's replacing itself. So not a huge one. Yeah. There's also this one though. This is like the most impressive dungeon. Dungeon, dungeon of the Mad Mage. Of the Mad Mage. One, hey, two, hey. three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, so on the seventh dungeon, by the way, that's a lot, right? That's a lot. To get through seven, seven stages. But at the very end, you draw three cards and reveal them you may cast one of them without paying its mana cost. Very interesting. So you're drawing three cards no matter what, and if you want to cast one of them, you can do so for free. But that requires seven venturings to get to the end of that dungeon, which is quite a lot. I think that is the biggest payoff, though, and that's the dungeon that I kind of want to move through. Yep, yep. Uh, uh, in Severus's case, they reward you for finishing dungeons. So the fastest one is Tomb of Annihilation, where it, you can take a three-step path to get out, and the longest is Dungeon of the Mad Mage, which takes seven, and Lost Mine of Fandelver takes four every time so lots of interesting choices here we're going to talk a little bit more of that as we get on but let's just move on to the other new commanders the second one is nihilor nihilor i'm not a DD person so i don't know how to pronounce all these please forgive me this commander is two and white blue black five cmc total for a three five legendary creature horror when Nihilor enters the battlefield, for each opponent, tap up to one untapped creature you control. When you do, gain control of target creature that player controls with power less than or equal to to the tapped creature's power for as long as you control Nihilor. Whenever you attack with a creature an opponent owns, you gain two life and that player loses two life. Okay. A lot to break down here. This enters the battlefield. You can choose, let's say you have a 4-4 four, four in the battlefield. You can choose that to tap, and it's untapped, and then you can go gain control of a target creature that any player controls for each opponent. You do one with power less than or equal to the tap creature's power. So something with four power or less on their side of the battlefield could be their commander, could be anything. Yeah. So you do need creatures for this to work. You can tap, because it's entered the battlefield effect, you can tap this creature Oh, as yes. Well. And this has so a So you can immediately power. take something three power. Or less. Uh, yeah. or, or less. But um, you do need creatures to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I do like that trigger though. Attack you with your own <laughs> thing and drain you. It's like yeah. one little bit of extra stuff. As long as you're not risking losing the creature in combat, or maybe you do want them to block with it. Um, this definitely seems like the kind of card that you'll want to flicker a bunch, uh, find ways to get it on and off the battlefield to keep stealing stuff. Interesting design. I don't think we've really ever seen anything quite like that. Yeah. Um, okay. So next, those are the two commanders in Esper. Those are the ones that we can actually switch. have helm this deck and switch it out. Uh, there are a few other legendary creatures that can can, that are new in this deck. Uh, one of them is actually from the main set, and so we're not going to go into a ton of detail on it, but it's uh, Hana Pashar Ruin Seeker. It's one blue, one white blue for a 2 3 legendary human wizard. Room abilities of dungeons you own trigger an additional time. Oh, so very nice. Works really well with Sephiroth. When you enter into a new dungeon room, if it says you gain one life, you do that, and then you do it again, because two of those triggers go on the stack now instead of just one. Awesome. But again, this is from the main set, so we're not like spending that much time on it. Yeah, and obviously, the, it, everything you need to know is right there on the card. All right, the last legendary creature is a mono blue one. It's Min Wily Illusionist. It's one blue blue for a legendary creature gnome wizard. That's a 1-3. 
Whenever you draw your second card each turn, create a 1-1 one, one blue illusion creature token with, this creature gets plus 1 plus 0 oh for each other illusion you control. And whenever an illusion you control dies, you may put a permanent card with mana value less than or equal to that creature's power from your hand onto the battlefield. So this is the kind of decks like uh, Jury and Ruin Diver where you want to draw a lot yeah, of cards. Yeah, draw two. Draw two mechanic. We had that in yeah. Modern Horizons 1. It was a very yeah. cool thing. Like this, yeah, yeah. this draw two kind of energy. Yeah. Um, it does feel like these are a little bit weird, though. If we're talking about the commanders of the deck, we're talking about Dungeon Matters Reanimator. Mm -hmm. We're talking about, you know horror steal beholder stuff. things steal your stuff right and have big enough power creatures to be able to tap and steal whatever we want right um and then this one which wants you to draw more cards yeah so this obviously doesn't really fit great in the deck but this could be a build somewhere uh i don't know how many illusions there are in magic whether or not you want min to be the main commander or not because it's only one color but this is an interesting card uh, it definitely is about drawing a lot and I do like that other text because let's say you make four of these, they each get plus one plus oh for each other illusion you control. They get pretty big. And when they die, that means you could potentially put a, you know, you could put a land into play for this, by the way, because it's a, just a permanent card with mana value less than uh, the creature's power yeah, that Min, died. Min does have some synergy in this deck. There are a lot of things that have you drawing just one extra card. There are looters that are designed to pitch creatures into your graveyard for, you know, your face commander. Mm -hmm. So there is some card draw things there but it is not like an efficient machine where you're drawing two cards every single turn right and triggering this over and over again uh which okay. is fine because it wasn't really in consideration for helming this deck yeah this deck is about dungeons it's on the actual deck box itself on the back it says descend into the dungeon so sephiroth wants to go into the dungeon and before we actually get into it let's talk very quickly about a card that's in this deck called dungeon map this is a three mana artifact you can tap it for a regular mana or you can pay three and tap it and venture into the dungeon so that is basically and you can activate it only as a sorcery this gives us a good idea of what wizards of the coast thinks is a fair cost to enter the dungeon yeah and that's three they think three and three is kind of a, not quite what you could pay an activated ability on a on a on an artifact like this yeah. to be able to draw a card because a lot of times it's four right you know on a land or on an artifact draw a card so they think that it's three i think that that might be a little bit over costed but you know what it's a dungeon deck. Yep. This is a fun deck with dungeons in it. And so we have ways to move through the dungeon. We have dungeons to choose from. We have commanders to synergize with it. And there are other cards that move you through the dungeon too. And so yeah, yeah, I'm I'm excited. It seems like Sephiris we've already can... it seems like we've already chosen the commander before we've even gotten to that section. Oh, yet. it's definitely <laughs> Sephiris, because if you're not venturing into the dungeon in this deck, why are you playing it? So uh let's talk about my favorite part. It is the stats. Stats. All right, we're talking about the stats here. Let's look down the list real quickly. Uh, Wizards, by the way, has done a fantastic job really making these decks function by themselves. The precons today are a, uh, the precons of the past are a far cry from how well they're designed and built these days, which I is know. very exciting. It's great because we've been doing these precon upgrades and there are constantly great saturation of yeah. ramp and card draw, which is what makes commander decks function. This deck has nine sources of ramp and Ooh. nine sources of card draw. Perfect. You That's like pretty much where you want to be. Uh, you can add more or less. Now, because it is an Esper, it doesn't have access to some of the best ramp in the game. Like like green does so your ramp is probably going to be actually a little more important in these colors uh, especially if you're it's artifact based because it might be more prone to removal speaking of removal there are 11 ways to singularly remove stuff in this deck and actually there's some premium ways too like swords to plowshares yeah you know utter spark, end, utter spark. End. great cards like, blue white and black is the the removal colors just chef's kiss kinds of removal <laughs> <laughs> removal spells in there. Um, um, it's even got a few a few board wipes in here. Uh, three board wipes. Uh, again, they're not they're not pumping these decks full of the most efficient best board wipes because they want them to be really balanced and get a lot of play rather than board yeah. wiping each other over and over again. And importantly, they want to be able to be played against each other. It's a great way to bring people into sort of the world of magic and commander is to buy the precons and then just shuffle them up and go immediately against each other. So much fun to be able to do that. Yeah. Um. So speaking of which with this pre-con we got to know what mechanics are sort of built in and if this is a dungeons matter deck if it's literally on the front of this thing we have to know how many cards in this synergize mm -hmm. with dungeons you know because it's only in one set it's only in this set right now there's not like dungeon cards from the past 20 years 
They do matter indeed, and there are seven Dungeon Matters cards in this deck. So we're talking about cards like Kama Pashar and, of course, the Dungeon Map, which are specifically like, go to the dungeon yeah. and venture into it. So it's not a ton, but it's in your command zone. So I mm -hmm. feel like you can almost always get through a dungeon or start the dungeon process. Yeah, and more importantly, the way that you really want to get through the dungeon in this deck is because of your commander, because of that first ability that says anytime, whenever one or more creature cards are put into your graveyard from anywhere... So we're looking for graveyard synergies, and there are 23 of them in this deck. So clearly there's a lot of different ways to play and mess around with your graveyard. Sephiroth wants you to be putting stuff there all the time. Wow, so that's a lot of graveyard synergies. One thing to keep in mind, though, is that some of those synergies put stuff in the graveyard, and some synergies take it out of the graveyard. Ah, so, okay, so it's so not purely is, it one It is not way. purely like, oh, okay. gra everything's graveyard, everything's amazing. Everything's gravy. You know, a lot of times there's two pieces of this equation. You know yeah, what I mean? I there do. are some things that put things into the graveyard and bring it back. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. Yeah. Uh, so we'll talk about more of that, obviously, when we talk about our ads. But finally, there's one final c category here called Mind Control. Yeah, we got we got our backup commander, which we're now calling back commander N Nilhar or whatever. Nilhar. That's like a mind control, steely kind of thing. And mm -hmm. so you're like, oh, is that going to be a part of this deck? And there is. There's a few cards in here that sort of synergize with that. There are about four different cards in here that have you stealing things, looking right. at people's hands and messing with stuff, and this sort of mind control-y type stuff. Yeah, um, still a very powerful effect. Obviously, it's not the main theme of the deck, but as long as it's not, you know, completely off the theme and it creates value, which it looks like it does, taking other people's creatures is a pretty powerful thing to do, then I, I, I'm fine with that being included here at that level. Yeah, so uh, ultimately we have really that this deck is about graveyards and yeah. then also about dungeons, sort of like graveyards, dungeons, maybe a little bit of mind control. A little bit of mind control. Yeah, a little bit of that. A good D&D campaign always has a little bit of mind control. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about the value of the deck. Obviously, whenever pre-cons are printed, they are filled with reprints, some of the most exciting things for Commander players because it means more cards are more accessible, and that means that you can power your deck up and not have that sort of barrier to entry if your budget isn't there. Yeah, if you want to buy this deck, you might be excited by all the stuff, but you need to know that it's a good value too. Like, mm -hmm. you don't want to just throw your money away. Okay, or if so you're buying singles and you're like, hey, uh, look at that. This card was reprinted in this deck. That's the perfect time to pick it up because it's going to have dropped in price. So we're only taking into account the value of the reprints of which there are 61 in the deck and not the new cards. So that would include the commanders that we just talked about because those are new cards. We don't actually know where those prices will settle. This is recorded before anyone else knows about it. So we don't even know what the prices are. But also one really important thing is that we've done the same technique and did the same everything for, for, everything. for all of these commander sets. Yep. And so we have data using the same method. Okay. Uh, so what's the total reprint value, DJ? Total reprint value is... $102.71. Very nice. Which, so, by the way, is really nice. Like, that's well above what you're paying for this deck, but also it's well above what we saw just a few months ago in Strixhaven. Mm -hmm. The average reprint value for Strixhaven was $88. Ah. And actually, if we take data from the past three years of Commander Precons, the average reprint value per deck is $87. Okay, great. So we're seeing, like, a good amount above the the sort of that baseline. So this is yeah. a great value. And also, again, this does not take into account the new cards that are printed. That can often wildly throw the number in a different direction. Oh, you yeah. Know. These numbers these numbers do crazy stuff because as soon as people figure it out, like the reprint prices go down, then these mm -hmm. new cards get value and those get thrown in there. And the numbers are crazy, but all the numbers that we're talking about are consistent because we do the same thing at the same time every yep. single set. Yep. Okay, so we'll talk about some of the noble reprints. We'll just list them off here. And there were 16 cards more than $2, which is our threshold when we talk about it. So the first one out the gate is a big one. It's Phantasmal Image. This thing had rocketed up to $22, but it's incredibly good. It's a clone effect that costs only two mana to get out. Sometimes you're just doing it for the Enter the Battlefield effects. You don't care that it gets removed when it gets targeted. Yeah, You've people, gotten the value. people can easily remove it, but oftentimes in Commander, like targeting something means pointing a single target removal spell at it anyway. Right, right, right. Your single target removal wasn't like a, you know, I'm just going to target it with something. But now if you have tapping things and all that stuff, sure, it's a little bit worse, but still extremely efficient, gets out there early and can get some really powerful effects and lets you play more spells that same turn. And is a non-bow with the number two card that's being <laughs> reprinted, Lightning Greaves. $7.50. This is a commander staple. You want this in so many different decks yep. because you want to protect your creatures. You want to give them haste. Lightning Greaves is awesome and so i'm really glad to keep seeing it reprinted over and over again so that we can get that price tag down i like it all right next up is felwar stone i'm really excited this card's been reprinted this is a classic two mana rock one that 
any single deck can play pretty much uh, and wants to for the most part we've seen the importance of two mana rocks with the signets and, and all those things get bigger and bigger in the format now Felwar Stone being reprinted is a great thing for anyone that needs to add this to their collection absolutely a uh, hostage taker is one of these sort of steely effects it's five dollars and fifty cents i love it too Still because good. in a format where everyone has a soul ring the idea of like oh hostage taker i get a, i get your soul yeah. ring is like such a heartbreaking he's thing. taking lots of hostages i i love hostage taker so much uh choke estuary which is one of those reveal a card from your hand lands uh we just saw the snarls get printed in strixhaven so this is just one from the older cycle yeah five dollars um, for that nimbus maze is another land yep. reprinted at 450 guy reach sanitarium reprinted at three dollars port town reprinted at three dollars propaganda as well it's a great card this is another staple for decks that need to just sort of hold back the opposition a little bit longer swords the plowshares like we mentioned um again one of the most efficient spells hey wayfarer's bobble dude wayfarer's bobble is an awesome card and it was supposed to be this like budget card that everyone wanted to use and then suddenly everyone was like oh this card's pretty good and yeah, it's budget and then the index. price spiked it was ridiculous yeah guess what new art for wayfarer's bobble and this card's got to go down it's got to be like under a dollar after this yeah like I, let's get I, it know, in budget decks everywhere i think this set's going to do really well tons of DD fans out there which hopefully means that wayfarer's bobble is going to be at a great place for people to pick up or just buy a deck and have that be included in part of it jimmy what do you think about the original owl itself baleful strix baleful strix Ca i guess owl's hoot uh i love baleful <laughs> strix there's a card that sees play all the way into legacy uh again extremely efficient blue and the black for a one one with death touch comes in and draws you a card that's sometimes all you need a great blocker and it replaces itself a uh, soul ring we don't need to talk about soul ring it's great it always sits above two dollars for some reason yep. but do you know what keep reprinting them get them into i mean i think they, they have to right and that, that you'll know that you're always going to get a soul ring and an, an arcane signet pretty much in every single one of these precons from here until forever hopefully wayfarer's bobble becomes a part of that sort of trio yeah uh, for any for of sure. the non-green colors as well yeah speaking of which they you just had arcane signet it's on the list yep at two dollars yep there you go um but they also reprint and it's just like a big just a big dumb creature ashen rider yeah just a fun thing comes in and exiles something leaves i'm gonna exile something on my way out too yeah the ashland rider as we call it around the office uh this is just a great card in reanimator decks as well Blue is that a compliment to ashland or an i hope I don't so even i mean like exiling stuff is one of the most powerful things you can do it's and like ashland you do it rolls twice. into the office and she's <laughs> like i exile you no <laughs> last one is a karmic guide karmic guide is a reanimation spell on a creature great and spell. uh you know this is a graveyard matters deck so we're gonna we're gonna definitely have that so those are all the cards in general the reprints i think are great let's look at like they got mana rocks like felwar stone and, yes. and wayfarer's bobble is ramp soul ring arcane signet they've got good land reprints too yeah they're taking those three dollar lands or those five dollar lands like choked estuary nimbus maze Port and bringing down. down those prices a lot yeah and not to mention you can play soul ring wayfarer's bobble arcane signet in so many decks if you're in a blue deck in greaves you can just yeah landing greaves right you can throw it into pretty much any deck and it will work same with phantasmal image uh, as well as propaganda so that's the kind of reprints I like to see things that are really just universal in their nature and you can play in a lot of decks so yeah, really happy up. with this deck so far let's talk about who you should run as the commander we've sort of already buried the lead on this <laughs> I'm pretty sure that going through a dungeon is going to be the thing that you want to do it's what the box wants you to do it's what the cards in the deck want you to do also it's what I want to do playing this deck because it's a Dungeons and Dragons set it's yeah. a brand new mechanic I've stolen stuff in commander before I want to move through dungeons me too it sounds really exciting and you know you could be really flavorful with it and if you can really hone this deck to move through dungeons quickly Sephiroth lets you do it on every player's turn once you could be getting through these dungeons every single turn rotation if you want to yeah, and, but he does it by sticking creatures in the graveyard. So that means we need to pay attention to have a, a high creature count. Yep. We need to make sure that they're going into the graveyard. And we also want to make sure to bring them back because if we bring them back every seven times you're in a dungeon or every four times you're in a dungeon, that might not be enough. We know that there's a lot of graveyard themes going on here. Yep. So we definitely want to put things in the graveyard, but also have the ability to get them back out again and support our commander. Okay, uh, let's talk about just very quickly some of the best cards in the deck. The first one we've already talked about it's hama pashar rune seeker yeah it just, doubles up all your dungeon matter stuff if everything you, if you're going to be doing this as your main theme getting twice the value is great because a lot of times the dungeons they look like they're kind of built for you know limited much more than constructed formats because 
if you're going into it and you're just scrying one and you've done a lot of work together just to scry one, feels bad. But if you get to do it twice, feels a little bit better. Scry one twice is, I think, very good. That That's pretty much like drawing a card because you get a lot of control over the top of your deck, especially if you sort of do the, the really powerful ones. I know. Draw six, be able to... <laughs> Reveal and cast two of them without paying their mana cost. Ooh, yeah. That's pretty good. Pretty good, yeah. Now, keep in mind, it's not adding on. You're doing both instances separately, but doubling up is one of the best things you can do in the deck, for sure. For sure. Um, the next card that I thought was particularly good is Champion of Wits. Uh, oh, it's one yeah. in the blue for a 2-1. Two, two in the blue. Two in a blue for a 2-1. Uh, and you can draw cards equal to its power. You have to discard two cards afterwards. And and here's the thing. Just on its face value, you're drawing cards and you're discarding them. That triggers your commander if you discard a creature card. It gets things into the graveyard. But if your uh, Champion of Wits ends up in the graveyard, you can eternalize it. Yeah. And so, like, it works on both ends. It works in your graveyard. It works with your commander. It works binning things and bringing it back. It's actually just great on yeah. so many different levels you want to find cards that can get cards into your graveyard and also love to be in the graveyard champion of wits does both because it has eternalize on it and when you do eternalize it you draw for discard two which is much better than draw two discard two yeah um the next one victimize so oh, yeah yeah victimize choose is, a creature in your graveyard sack a creature and then no, choose two creatures yeah, you in your get graveyard, two sorry back. and you get two for the price of one and three mana pretty good yeah. So the reason why I think that victimize is particularly good in this is because there, this is not a traditional reanimator. You're mm -hmm. not, you're not putting something gigantic into your graveyard. Like one of the biggest things in this deck to reanimate is Ashen Rider. Yeah. And that's about it, honestly. Like there's nothing else really, really big yeah. to put in there. And also there are not the most efficient reanimation spells like reanimate or animate dead is not in here. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have the big creatures and you also have sort of the slower four mana, five mana clunky reanimate effects, you know, you're not cheating big things into play uh, earlier than other people can just cast them. Mm -hmm. So instead you need value generation um, reanimation. So that means that you want to bring back two things that have powerful enter the battlefield effects, right? You know, and that's why victimize is particularly good because it works with this value reanimation plan. And mm -hmm. that's what a lot of this is because there are so many really great cards in the deck, like hostage taker and baleful Strix, you know, and, um, mold drifter, mold you drifter, know what I mean? Ashen rider. Yeah. The, all these, all cards. of those cards that draw and stuff like that. Yeah. There's a cloud drifter as well in here. Cloud blazer, blazer, not drifter. Sorry. Yeah. I was <laughs> combining cloud blazer and mold drifter. Yeah. Victimize is a great card. Not to mention when you cast it and sack that creature, it will also also trigger Sephiroth's ability. And hey, maybe you can get that card out of your graveyard thanks to Sephiroth's Create Undead ability that lets you draw that once you finish a dungeon. Yeah, so basically the I think that the plan that we're going for is move through dungeons, but while we're moving through dungeons, we are churning through our deck. Creatures on the battlefield that get us value, throw them into the graveyard willy-nilly, bring them back out again, mm -hmm. uh, and sort of really play this incremental value as we play more and more, you know, just strong two-for-one creatures. Yep, I love it. Okay, we're going to talk about the cards to add and the cards to take out, the most exciting part of the episode, but first, let's take a break and hear a message from our mineral sponsors. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Check out betterhelp.com slash command zone. I am rage incarnate, fury made flesh. I am the Inferno Titan, and anger brings me power! <laughs> mm -hmm. Or, at least that's how I used to justify my behavior. The truth is, I wasn't in control of my emotions. That's why I turned to BetterHelp. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist, so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. Unload the stressors and get some unbiased feedback. You'd be pretty surprised what you might gain from it. See if it's for you. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and Command Zone listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash command zone. That's betterhel dot com slash command zone. Sure, I still get angry when Sun Titan eats guacamole that I clearly labeled as mine. <clears throat> but now I can manage it. See? I barely even exploded there. Summer is here and that means I'm always on the move. With the seamless Bluetooth pairing of my Raycon wireless earbuds, I can take my favorite shows and podcasts with me wherever I go. Like Tolarian Community College. Plus, my Raycon sounds so good, it's like I'm in the same room with the professor. Reprints, reprints, reprints. There's never enough Magic the Gathering reprints. Raycons look and feel great, so when I'm on the road, the prof's on the road. Yeah, so I threw the deck box out of a train going 137 miles per hour. It didn't pop open, but there was a scratch, so C plus. 
There are no cumbersome wires getting in my way, so when I'm making lunch, the prof is making lunch. Oh no, there's no more cheese. I told you, buy singles. Listen up, Raycon's offering 15% off all their products for fans of the Command Zone, and here's what you've gotta do to get it. Go to buyraycon.com slash command. There you'll get 15% off your entire Raycon order, and it's such a good deal, you'll wanna grab a pair and a spare. That's 15% off at buyraycon.com slash command. Again, buyraycon.com slash command. Actually, I think I'm gonna leave these here. Oh, thank God. Psst. Psst. Yeah, you. Are you really still browsing the internet without a VPN? Seriously? Between this whisper soap cloak and Express VPN, nothing can block me. I'm unblockable. Try and block me. <gasps> See? Can't do it. Especially not when I'm watching shows and movies online. You see, Express VPN lets me change the country that sites think I'm in. I just open the app, pick a location, and one tap of a button lets me check out shows and movies from almost 100 different regions. I'm watching Doctor Who on Netflix UK. I'm checking out Studio Ghibli movies on Netflix Japan. I'm binging Zendikar's next top Eldrazi. If you're not using ExpressVPN, you're only seeing a sliver of the content you could be enjoying. And I'm not talking about The Overlord. So be smart, protect your data, and stop paying full price for streaming services while only getting a fraction of what they offer. Visit expressvpn.com slash command right now and get three extra months of their service for free. That's expressvpn.com slash command. Again, expressvpn.com slash command. I'll see you on the other side. You'll never see me unless I want you to. Okay, we are back talking about Dungeons. Dungeons of Death, that is. The new Esper Commander Precon from AFR and the exciting part of the episode I can't wait for. Cards to add. Now remember, our total budget, around $30 for this exercise. And uh, DJ, you were the one in charge of this. You want to talk about what your general thought process was moving through this? That's right. 10 cards in, 10 cards out. And look, I talked about how the reanimation strategy is underpowered. Mm -hmm. In order to really bring this up to reanimator speed, you'll need to put in expensive reanimation cards and expensive creatures. Mm -hmm. And that's too much. It overwhelms the strategy. And then also, are you really moving through dungeons then? Right. You know what I mean? Right. And so, you do want to move through dungeons because Sephiroth is all about that. Yeah. So I think that I'm going to lean into that uh, idea of bringing some of the stuff back, maybe having a few bigger creatures in here. Mm -hmm. But really, I'm looking at value at every turn, making okay. sure that I can optimize the value creatures that are already in this deck. So the first thing I'm going to look at is just more reanimation. Yeah. yeah, I love this first edition. It is a, uh, a card with a brand new mechanic from Strixhaven. It's incarnation technique. It's four in the black for a sorcery with demonstrate. And we'll re talk about that in a second. But the main ability here is mill five cards, then return the creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Now the demonstrate says that when you cast a spell, you can choose to copy it. And if you do, an opponent of yours also copies it. So you could technically get incarnation technique twice if one of your opponents gets it once. So the reason why I like this is that it also has mill on it because yeah. mill can trigger your commander. So it kind of does two things for one. I also think that it's a really fun card and I like being able to target other people, uh, especially in commander because it's a political game and mm -hmm. you know, I really like that, that sort of effect. Well also notably when you mill the five cards with this card, you don't actually have to return any cards you mill this way to the battlefield. You can mill a bunch of stuff and then be like, you know what? I really want that other thing that's been in my graveyard for longer, bring that back and still get the mill and all that stuff. Absolutely. Pretty awesome. Um, so the next one, another reanimation effect that's really new is Priest of Fell Rites. It's white and a black for a 2-2 human warlock. You can tap and pay three life, sacrifice Priest of Fell Rites, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield, activate only as a sorcery. Okay, now Priest of Fell Rites, I really like this card as well because of Unearth. Dun, dun, dun. It has a whole nother line of text. It unearths for three white black, which means that you can play this back and it gains haste and you mm. can play it out of your graveyard. So you mill this to incarnation technique. You loot it away. You still have value from your graveyard and it brings back other relevant creatures. Yeah, so that's really strong here. The fact that you can get value out of this twice. You're totally okay if it goes straight to your graveyard when it gets milled or if you discard it to something like Champion of Wits. Just a lot of synergy here. And, and when you first cast it just white and black and it's an instant activated ability you pay three life for not mana so that can happen really great yeah um 
And then similarly, Phyrexian Delver is three black black for a three two creature zombie. When Phyrexian Delver enters the battlefield, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. You lose life until that creature's converted mana cost. Oh, nice. Yeah, just another creature that brings another creature back. We're going to be putting so much stuff into our graveyard. We definitely want to just bring more back. And so creatures that can bring back more creatures are great because they synergize with mm -hmm. all the other stuff going on in this deck. Yeah, not to mention, you know, if you are able to reanimate this out the graveyard from Sephiroth, you get a two for one there as well. Uh, just don't kill yourself with the ability. Awesome. Um, right. Okay, Shieldred, Whispering One. Yeah. And I was like, wait, DJ, isn't this an expensive this, card? It turns this out, is my heavy hitter. It's the heavy hitter. That's right. And this is like a game ender as well. Five black black for a legendary creature Praetor. That's a 6-6 six, six with Swamp Walk. At the beginning of your upkeep, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, that player sacrifices a creature. Wow. So this would just reanimate something out of your graveyard every single turn and make everyone sacrifice a creature on their upkeep. Yeesh. So this is this is an expensive one, and I've actually made sure that both price, price points can fit into this deck. Right. Uh, right now, there are places where you can pre-order the secret lair drop yes. for $6, which is very reasonable for a Praetor. But it's not really fair because you can't buy that right now. Yeah, so you have actually, to buy it with the rest of them as well. Yeah, so. exactly. So that's not exactly fair. So it still fits into the budget with for the price tag of $17. Okay. Because it was reprinted in Jumpstart, you know, so $17. And it still fits into the budget. My $30 budget, more than half spent on a single card. You know, but by the way, if you wait a little bit and you're patient, and you get the Frexian one, like somehow for six bucks, then like this, the price point for this whole upgrade is like under 20 bucks. Wow. That's pretty nice. I mean, like, I think that's, this might be the best secret layer of all time. Just, it has all the prayers in it with the cool Frexian text. I think it's an easy buy for anyone that's interested in that sort of stuff. All right. The last reanimator effect is also a big one, but way, way cheaper. Not in mana cost though. It's Sepulchral Primordial. Five black black for an avatar, five four with Intimidate. When it enters the battlefield, for each opponent, you may put up to one target creature card from that player's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Wow, for each opponent, you can you can reanimate something? Just great. These Primordials are awesome in our format, and Sepulchral Primordial is really great. 35 cents. Nice. So I actually added two seven drops. I didn't go crazy on the big creatures, but I mean, you want to bring back things like Shieldred or Sepulchral Primordial if you have this reanimation strategy in the in Yeah, deck. yeah. It's a, also a card that just, it's terrifying. And it doesn't see it that just much takes play. over a game. Game, right? It really can, yeah, especially yeah. late in the game when you're going to be casting this and everyone's got some juicy targets. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, juicy targets. All right, we also want to be able to feed the graveyard, too. Yum, uh, yum, yum, yum. We yum. have a lot of ways to feed the graveyard already in the deck, so I only have a couple cards that go with this strategy. There's a lot of looters, a lot of things like that, but there's one card that I just couldn't leave out. It's Sir Conrad the Grim. Heck, yeah. Three black black for a 5-4 legendary human knight. Whenever another creature dies or a creature card is put into a graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield or a creature card leaves your graveyard <laughs> sir conrad the grim deals one damage to each opponent wow there's a lot of things but basically it's going to trigger all the time oh yeah pretty Just much all, all the, the time. time yeah yeah uh one in a black each player mills a card yeah yes! that's great and you could do this at any time so you can actually start triggering your general on your opponent's turns as well yep. so you're always moving through a dungeon sir conrad yes yeah he's great the text on sir conrad kind of reads similarly to sephiroth where it's like it just wants creature cards to enter the graveyard from anywhere in sephiroth's case conrad doesn't allow it to be any from the battlefield for his thing but it doesn't matter like he can mill you a bunch it's going to do a lot of incidental damage to each opponent and specifically give you a really repeatable way to trigger sephiroth over and over again again yeah and it just synergizes with everything that we do it's yeah. wonderful another great way to get creature cards into your graveyard and get some value out of it is atris oracle of half truths this is two blue and a black for a legendary creature human advisor three two with menace when atris enters the battlefield target opponent looks at the top three cards of your library and separates them into a face down pile and a face up pile put one pile into your hand and the other into your graveyard so it gives your opponent a little bit of a choice here but pretty sure you can almost guarantee a creature goes in there as long as one's been flipped up in the top three and honestly for a ton of areas of this deck it doesn't matter if things are in your graveyard because you have tons of ways to rebuy them yep you know you can reanimate it later or you can even like eternalize it from there or flash it back your graveyard is an extension of your hand and so a creature like this can really draw you kind of three cards it's awesome yeah i love that um and it seems like we've got a lot of enter the battlefield effects so what's the last category here of cards that we want to add we've got a little bit of blink action uh and along with that we have a few cards that are particularly good for blinking uh why don't you uh, lead off with one of my favorite little blinky guys uh, and one of my favorite arts as well thank you said mckinnon it's soul herder 
One white and a blue for a creature spirit 1-1. One, one. Whenever a creature is exiled from the battlefield, play a plus one plus one counter on Soul Herder. And at the beginning of your end step, you may exile another target creature you control, then return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control. So this gets you repeat the effects as well as increase the size of the Soul Herder every single turn. And uh, we just talked about some great cards here with Atris and with Sepulchre Primordial. Oh my gosh. Wow. Baleful Strix and Moldrifter and yeah. all of these other cards in here. So yeah, they're, it's just a great deck to give you value with every creature. So you might as well blink some of those creatures. Yep. And there are a few more creatures that I really like to blink. You know, I want to give this card a little bit more of a shout out. It's Ethereal Valkyrie. It's four blue white for a four, four flying spirit angel. And whenever Ethereal Valkyrie enters the battlefield or attacks, draw a card, then exile card from your hand face down. It becomes fort foretold. Hmm. It's foretell cost is reduced by two. Wow, okay. So this is a great way when it enters the battlefield or it attacks, you can start hiding cards away and they cannot be affected by your opponent. And you can cast them on later turns and actually its mana cost is reduced by two. So this can be really efficient uh, once it gets going and having cards like Soul Herder already out means that you're going to get extra duper, super duper value from it. Yeah, I, I like that if you have the blink going on, you, it automatically replaces itself. You draw that card and it does kind of give you that ramp for bigger things or to do right. multiple spells later on. Not to so, mention, you can swing with the Ethereal Valkyrie and then have it blink by Soul Herder. It comes back untapped, so it's almost like it has Vigilance. Ooh, ooh. Um, and the last card here, uh, the, a card that I particularly love, is Noxious Gear Hulk. It's four black black for an artifact creature construct, five four with Menace. When it enters the battlefield, you may destroy another target creature. If a creature is destroyed this way, you gain life equal to its toughness. So this thing just comes in like a hammer, blows something up. Uh, counts as an artifact and is able to be recurred and blinked and just destroy a lot of stuff gain you a lot of life can be a huge swing in certain yeah, games yeah I also like it as menace because it actually attacks a little bit ah, better nice, now yeah. and honestly I removed a few pieces of single, ta single target removal that I didn't like very much so I'm like you know what I should probably put one good uh, blink target that can remove something back into the deck right right so let's talk about the cards that we do want to take out here and a little bit of reasoning why the first is Nihilor which we talked about this is the card that comes in you want to tap your creatures to steal stuff it makes sense this just isn't what this deck is built to do the creatures aren't powerful enough to steal things that are relevant like i want to yeah. steal your opponent's dragon in a dungeon dragon deck i want your dragon this deck does not have five power things right. that can realistically steal that dragon and then people are just going to kill nihilor yeah and you also want sacrifice outlets when you start stealing and killing things mm -hmm. and that sort of takes you just into a different realm of deck so nihilor even though it is in the colors i think if you want to build around it make another deck around it don't make Absolutely. this one around it Oh, and then the next one, we're cutting the other commander. We're cutting <laughs> <laughs> Min Wiley Illusionist. Uh, there are, there's a lot of card drawn here, but there's just not enough. And the, the yeah. spirits, the illusions that it creates are just not powerful enough. And so when you have something like this, you really need to make sure it hums. You need to have a critical yeah. mass of those card draw. And it just wasn't there. Uh, the next is one of the forms of single target removal, but it's a little clunky. It's Immovable Rod. D&D uh, &D fans will know about this one. It's one white mana for an artifact. You may choose not to untap this card during your untap step. Whenever this card becomes untapped, venture into the dungeon. You're like, wait a minute, why well, remove it? Because it costs three and a white to tap it. And for as long as Immovable Rod remains tapped, another target permanent loses all abilities and can't attack or block. So this was a hard one for me to take out. It's not a good removal spell, but it does say venture into the dungeon. Yeah, but it costs five to do for the first time. And the moment that it untaps, you have to pay another four to do it again. Now it is cool that you can move it around, but that means you're also freeing up the last thing it was holding down. Is that worth it? I think actually it makes a lot of sense because your commander is giving you tons of ways to venture into the dungeon. And it's better to build around that than to waste four mana on this every turn. Untapping it's also not, and it's it. not a creature. You can't bring it back from the graveyard. Like, wouldn't you rather have something that synergizes with your command? and right. the other cards that bring things back rather than just an artifact that is a really clunky removal spell. Totally. Um, another clunky removal spell is Necrotic Sliver. One white black for a 2-2 sliver. All slivers have three sacrifice this permanent destroy target permanent. Okay, um, so this is pay three for the sliver then you can pay three on the same sliver to blow up a permanent six mana not super efficient it does get rid of any permanent so we can get rid of lands and all that stuff so that is nice there but i can understand why you might not want to have this in the deck yeah and also it doesn't blink or recur very well yeah you know? so 
Next up, we have Ronum Unicorn, one in the white for a creature unicorn. That's a 2-2. Two -two. And you can just sacrifice this card to destroy target enchantment. We already have Utter End and other good cards in we here. We really do have really good single target removal. And I would rather, because there's some blinking things in here and some reanimation things in here, mm -hmm. I'd rather have more reliable creature-based removal. For sure. Um, next, we have Reassembling Skeleton, one in a black for a 1-1. One -one. It's a skeleton, and you can pay one in a black to return Reassembling Skeleton from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped um this there aren't a lot of ways to actually get this into the graveyard yeah where's my sack outlet yeah like where's my sack outlet? am i am i just chumping with it mm -hmm. like i understand that it's really good to discard this uh because you get value and then you can bring it back to the battlefield but like i would rather this come back to my hand so i could discard it or loot it away again right. and so really it's not doing its job um, by by being a part of the engine, you it's know? reassembling, but not fast. It needs to be it needs to be an engine piece if I'm going to play a one one for two. Right. Next up, we have Murder of Crows, three blue blue for a creature bird. Whenever another creature dies, you may draw a card. If you do discard a card, it's also a four four. So this is nice, but you're not having a lot of creatures necessarily be dying, and who cares about looting? It's an unreliable when looter. You have, I want a reliable looter, yeah, and there are more. more there are more looters in here too. Right, right. I don't need a critical mass of looters, anyways. You know, it's not mm -hmm. like you need a bajillion of them especially one that's conditional that you can't just like tap and loot yeah exactly i'd much rather one that i know that at instant speed on someone else's turn so i can trigger sephiroth again instead of one that relies on the creature dying and this isn't like a token deck where you can you really use that ability to exactly the most. eternal dragon is another cut five white white for a five five flyer you can pay five white white to return uh eternal dragon from your graveyard to your hand activate only during your upkeep and it has plane cycling for two uh, this is super so clunky. We got a uh, MH2 right. like upgrade of this card, which makes me wonder why they put the old one that like wasn't good enough in this pre-constructed yeah. deck. I think plane cycling is the one because you can discard it and it will trigger Sephiris, but this is a seven drop and I'd much rather have one of your seven drop picks like the Noxious Gear Hulk or the Shil Sepulchral Primordial Children or Shieldred, 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 yeah, Primordial, yeah, over an Eternal Dragon. Um, Eternal Dragon is a fun card though, but you're right. We just got a cool upgrade to it in Modern Horizons 2. This one is already at seven mana. Feels like you mostly want to be plane cycling with this, but you know, I think adding in better synergy so you're not relying on that. But it is a good note that you can build a Sephiris deck with creatures with cycling abilities, and that mm -hmm. will count for the discarding. Uh, yeah, there's a, a few the others graveyard. that have cycling. I wish that there were ones that cycled a little bit better, that were better, that I'd actually want to cast. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Or reanimate. I don't want to really reanimate that because it's not impactful enough. Yeah, it's just a 5 5 flyer for seven that you can bounce back to your hand. Doesn't seem impactful enough. All right, next up is Bucknard's Everfold Purse very uh, thematic to D&D. It's a two-mana artifact. You can pay one to tap it and roll a D4 and create a number of treasure tokens equal to the result. If that was it, this card would be one of the best cards on the oh, planet. Oh, it'd be so good. <laughs> Instead, it says the player to your right gains control of Bucknard's Everfull Purse. Oh, so, not so great. It's not even target player. If it was target player, I think it'd be playable. Ah, uh, you could give it to someone else and that needs it. And they give it back to you. Right, right. But, so like, let's take a look at the average case scenario. Okay, you play, how much does this cost to cast? Two mana. Activate. One. Okay, so three mana to get it going. You roll a die and the average roll would be? Between a two and a three. Yeah. What is it? It's a roll. It's a roll, roll a, a D4. So it'd be a, a two, right? Yeah, I guess so between a two and two a three. Two and a three, yeah. Yeah. It's, so, it's, yeah. The average roll is one. It's 25% for either of them, right? Yeah. So you might aver you might get back three. You might get your mana back in terms of treasure. Right. But there's, you know, it's more, it's more likely that you get back. Basically, you're getting back less mana. Yeah. You're, and you're, then you're passing it on to someone else. One in four chance to get a one, which is awful. One in four chance to get a two, which is not great. One in four chance to get a three, which is better. One in four chance to get four, which is cool. If but you you're got just to getting do it one again. extra mana. Yeah, you're just getting one extra mana. If you could do this every turn, it'd be awesome, but you are passing this off and you don't have control work. You're using too. a card to, to best case scenario, get one extra mana, and then you're passing it to your opponent who just gets to do it for free. And right. then your other opponent that gets to do it for free. And then your other opponent that gets to do it for free. You're yeah. the one that invested the upfront cost and the card. They're just paying one to do it. Yeah, and, and it's hard oh. to take advantage of this as well because all the things, including passing it to the person to your right, is attached to the cost of the card and, and the oh effect. Oh my gosh, I think it's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> but I, the reason why I think it's so horrible is because I really wanted to like it. Like, I wanted to be right. able to pass it in between you and I. It is a cool effect, and maybe at the right tables it could be a lot of fun, but in terms of what we're doing here, we're trying to make this deck a little bit more optimized, and this just card doesn't make the cut. All right, next, we last, we have Revivify. It's two and a white for an instant, 
instant, roll a d20 and add the number of creature cards in your graveyard that were put there from the battlefield this turn. A 1 to a 14, return all creature cards from your graveyard that were put there, put there from the battlefield this turn to your hand. 15 plus, return those cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. Okay, so a 1 in 4 chance to get a 15 to a 20 to bring all those cards back. This is best after a board wipe. Um, it's interesting. So this is three mana protection. There's a ton of three mana protection out there. I mean, Teferi's protection is the best. That's not a good comparison because <laughs> Teferi's protection is very great. Expensive, yeah. But what about the really cheap ones that just give your creatures indestructible? Ah, Do you know okay. what I mean? Or exile all of them and bring them back. Yes, the there's the a lot of those now in mono white. I think like end of semester is one there's of them. There's just, there's yeah. so many of them and they're not like that. They're not expensive. They're not crazy. And this one, most of the time, will just bring them back to your hand. Yeah, not amazing. You want ones that get them back to the battlefield. And you can bring them back to ba the battlefield, but like, if you just have a couple creatures die, you're not likely to bring them back to the battlefield. Mm -hmm. You need to have a lot of creatures on the battlefield to be able to reliably bring them back. So this is protection that is unreliable, and that's when you need protection to be reliable. That's what you need. It's true. What are you gonna do, hold up three mana and then hope that you can rebuy your creatures? I mean, oh my gosh. Not I great. do not like it at all. Not great. But, you know, it could see play maybe decks that are able to manipulate dice rolls and stuff. I could see that because if you're able to reasonably do that and always get a 15 plus, then cool. That'd be really neat. Okay. So how does this deck play? Uh, I got to play this on our Game Nights episode, uh, spoiler alert. And I actually had a lot of fun with just the pre-con with nothing put into it. But the thing I definitely felt is that I was missing on ways to get creatures into the graveyard at instant speed so I could be moving through the dungeons on my opponent's turn. That, to me, felt like the biggest thing this deck was missing. Uh, and then as I played it through, and I played it through mostly with the upgrades that I did, uh, I noticed that a lot of the creatures are great to play. Like, it mm -hmm. feels really great to play your cards that draw other cards, but it definitely can sort of stall out a little bit, which is why I was really happy to add those bigger, more impactful creatures. Because, right, right. you know, I could churn through stuff and sort of slow down the game with my, you know, little creatures that just drew me extra cards, but it really took a bigger creature to come down or a synergistic piece to be able to take this deck over the top. Right. Uh, and so that's actually a really, really fun way to play is that all of your creatures are like two for ones built in and as you go through with your two for ones you're actually moving through the dungeon too mm -hmm. so it feels like this deck is chuck full of value it just feels like everywhere you go there's more and more value and every creature does multiple things and then you get to bring those creatures back again yeah and not to mention you have three choices of dungeon there may be more in the future who knows uh but you do get that extra value and going through a dungeon is just a lot of fun so that's the thing i think would make this deck the most fun it's just being able to move through dungeons quickly maybe surprise people some of the effects if you do it at the right time and you know on each turn rotation you can go up to three moving move through the dungeons three times with your commander if you have ways to kick cards into your graveyard that are creatures awesome so i love this deck and hopefully you like it too uh tell us do you like this esper pre-constructed deck do you want to move through dungeons yeah what do you think about the dungeon mechanic do you think it's a little too silly a little too slow do you hope we see more dungeons in the future because i assure you DD has plenty of places to draw inspiration from when it comes to it tell us all that stuff in the comments down below all right and of course if you want to pick up this deck right now you can go to cardkingdom.com slash command zone pre-order the sealed product maybe get all of the commander decks and have a big fun commander deck night one of my favorite things to do with the pre-cons every year is just gather around our friends and play just the pre-cons or like dj and they did uh on the extra turns episode upgrade them a little bit and play with the slightly higher powered versions um they're bound to be played against each other so it's always a ton of fun and the games end up being really really interesting and of course ultra pro's got the best D, &D art on the planet right now because they made it for magic the gathering and that means there's way more art than normal so go ahead, stick a new playmat underneath you when you play this Esper Precon. You can find all that stuff from Ultra Pro, or you can order it from your local game store or from cardkingdom.com slash command zone. There is no end step because these are extra special episodes. Extra. But we have a big thanks to our amazing team here at the Command Zone. Lady Danger, Manson Long, Craig Blanchett, Ashlyn Rose, Alfred Estaca, Josh Murphy, Jake Boss, Patrick Nan, Jordan Pridgen, Arthur Metacraft, Sam Waldo, Gaurav Galati, and Dan Sheehan. And special thanks to Jeffrey Palmer for the living cards animations that live behind us often on set, but most importantly, in the front of our episodes, that awesome soul ring you always see. You can find him at Living Cards MTG. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm and excited. We, yeah, I am excited too. Woo. We'll see you all next time, everybody. Bye bye, everyone. Bye bye.
For further inquiries, send an email to commandcast at rocketjump.com or ask us on Twitter at JF Wong and at Josh Lee Kwai. See you later, alligator. Greetings, humans. <laughs>